Today on Talking Solutions, we're going to discuss heroes in the rough. We've got Tracy Brewer and Marie Steele. Tracy, let's start with you. You are an association manager for SNFA? Southern Nevada Fleet Association. We're an association that deals with the local fleet managers and some of the vendors. They all get together so that they can discuss their problems and we bring in different speakers for them that can solve some of their problems or give them new information that they need to network and work problems out so that it makes us a better city with all the different fleets. We also try to do a lot of the clean energy. We promote that, you know, most of our fleets are better than they used to be. So basically, it's different companies that have a lot of vehicles in service and they have common needs. So you help everybody kind of spread the word. Exactly. But that's not why you're here today. You're here to talk about Heroes in the Rough, which we will get to in just a moment. Also want to welcome Marie Steele. You are on the board for SNFA. That's correct. Plus, I understand you work for NV Energy. That is also correct. From my perspective, serving on the board it is from NV Energy because I'm actually passionate about alternative fuel vehicles and sustainable solutions to provide for these fleet managers. So I'm there talking about electrification of our transportation to reduce carbon emissions, which Southern Nevada Fleet Association came about from the Clean Cities Coalition effort in 2011. So the fleets in Southern Nevada have made a huge effort in reducing their emissions, which is great for the health of our community. We really take pride in that and continuing to deploy alternative fuel vehicles. That is a great thing to do. I was just on the phone with my mom talking about when I need another car next spring. I'm going with something electric or hybrid. There's lots of fun cars out there for you. Can't wait. (laughs) So we're here to talk about Heroes in the Rough. Tracy? Heroes in the Rough is a local group that helps wounded warriors come back from their injuries and fit back into the community. They do that with multiple different ways. They have golf events, so they have tournaments for them. They also offer golf lessons, all the equipment that they need. So if they need special golf carts, they make sure that that gets supplied to them. They offer softball tournaments and anything they need for softball, they put them on teams. They also offer scuba diving, any kind of help they can do with the families because when they come back, it's the whole family that has to readjust. Mm -hmm. And some of the scars aren't visible. You know, a lot of them have PTSD. It's a big problem for them coming back. So we've joined up with them because we think this is a really great cause and we're having our golf event. Once a year, we have a golf tournament and all of the proceeds go to a charity. This year it's going to be Heroes in the Rough. We want to help them buy more of the equipment and help these guys any way that they can. When our service members return from their deployments and understandably have some issues following, because they went through a lot, all for us, to get them back into the normal things of life is so important. I also want to welcome Rob Jackson. I understand you come from the serviceman side. Correct. I'm also a disabled veteran been with the Heroes in the Rough starting in 2013 as just a regular golf member. And we are doing a little bit of change of command now going into 16 to 17. So they elected me to be president of the organization. So my job is with these veterans, with the disabled vets, is to get them out. Giving the opportunity for disabled veterans to get involved with us so they don't keep themselves cooped up. The suicidal rate is too high. Oh, it's horrible. Yes, to let veterans not have programs like this to help them. So it's very, very important. And our golf program is our first sport that we're actually doing. Something for them to look forward to, spending the day with comrades, being in an acquired environment, and the bottom line is to let them feel wanted. And appreciated. Yes. And like I said, Rob, I was just talking about how it's so nice to just do some normal things when we get home. Right. You know, just the everyday activities that I would hope helps to make a returning veteran who has issues, understandably, feel more like everyday life is closer to the way it was before they went. Right. And the big problem is, is like I was saying about being cooped up, the worst thing for somebody, because for myself, I suffer from PTSD, is to be by yourself, having those thoughts you don't want to think about and putting you in more of a depression. For myself, I suffer from severe depression. I take medication every day to keep myself going. If the veterans don't get this help, or it's offered at the VA hospital, we have a PTSD team, especially if they're in combat. Not everybody wants to take medicine. We know that. But we have groups. We have all that kind of stuff. But nothing wrong just trying it because it's better than thinking a bad thought and maybe taking your life. And you don't want to do that. It happened one time was in our program one of the guys was having a big issue we tried to help as much as possible the ceo adam jesse the founder was doing the best he could the next thing we know he committed suicide and that's sad we do the best we can try to get the help for people but we can't do it all but there is programs out there this is one of them 
to help those people out. And for every service member that you're able to pull away from that dark place, get them back into the light and get them out and having a great time and laugh and just having this wonderful experience, that's such a victory. It is. Getting the victory like that is very, very important because we always ask people, how are you feeling today? If they're not feeling, let us know. We're here to help you. There's things that I say to my own psychologists and psychiatrists that I never would say in front of anybody else, but they're there for that and they're licensed for that to listen to you because they're not going to give you a different opinion like other people will. So those people are very, very important to be in your type of program, what you're trying to do. There is a public service campaign running right now. We've got it on with our Beasley Media Group stations and the whole whole approach of the public service announcement is a service member saying, I'm good. But then underneath the surface, there's, I'm good, but I don't feel safe. I'm good, but I'm depressed. Asking us as individuals in this community to listen deeper, to listen more, to ask more questions, to find out, I'm glad that you said you're good, but is there anything else we can help with? We've got to wrap our arms around our returning service members and make sure that they are really good. Correct. That's important. And you can't read them all the time. But if you keep them involved with things, that keeps them away from those thoughts happening. And that's the principle because, you know, when you go out and golf, you know, they feel good about it. They're in open air. We're trying to get them not to think about things except just a fun activity to do. Yeah. Plus, we give free golf lessons too. And that's important. People say, well, I don't know how to golf. That's okay. Come on board. We'll teach you how to golf. So Heroes in the Rough has been in existence, although the name was slightly different since 2013. And just this year, the Southern Nevada Fleet Association, we've got Tracy Brewer, also Marie Steele, This is the first year that your annual charity golf tournament is benefiting Heroes of the Rough. Yes. I'm sure it's not too early for people to get involved. What do you need them to do? We need them to sign up to golf. We need sponsors. We need gifts for their gift bags. So when the golfers come in and golf, they have things in their bags. We need raffle prizes. We just need some support so that we can have the best golf event and give them the most money possible. Our goal is to have a good event so everybody has a good time, but the ultimate goal is to give them as much as we can so that they can do more for the community. A really memorable day Mm -hmm. at the Heroes in the Rough golf tournament, but also to provide funds from that golf tournament to help fund the activities and events that you might have with Heroes in the Rough. Yes. The golf event will be at Aliante Golf Course. That's where we've always had our golf tournament. And they're the ones that give the free lessons. They give these guys the lessons. They get them out there. They are awesome. They're the ones that actually told us about the group. And they said, this might be a group that you want to talk to. And they do so much for them. And dealing with them has been great. I've gone to a couple of golf events that have been put on for them to help out and to see different things and to meet some of them. And they're just awesome guys. It's going to be a great event. What's the actual day? October 14th. We have a little bit of time, but Mm -hmm. it's a good time to get signed up. And I know, Marie, when we were setting this up on the telephone, I was saying I wasn't sure if Heroes in the Rough golf tournament, if it was just for veterans or if it was also for people who could come out and golf as well and help to support the cause. It's for anybody. Anybody who'd like to come out there and golf, we welcome you. We do want some of the heroes to be able to golf. I know we've got a couple teams that are sponsored for them so that they can come out and golf with them. So you can meet them and you can talk to them and you can see where the money's going because that's the main thing. You want to know who's getting this and why are they getting it? What do they need it for? I start planning this golf event early in the year. So I wanted to go meet them and kind of get a feel of who they are and what they need. It's really been enlightening because they're a great group. Marie? Partnering with Heroes in the Rough is to see that camaraderie and to be able to offer that for other citizens to come out and see and support in Southern Nevada because one of the great offerings that we truly saw benefit in them providing other veterans was the camaraderie and the alumni ship of the group that they talk about and help them get through the different veteran applications that they provide this great service to make it a little bit easier. So not even just the sports activities to get them out, but also help them get through the processes of all the support that's available. So we've been having a great time working with them now, getting to know them better and hoping that everybody else would love to come out and join and see that great camaraderie. Up close and personal makes such a difference because I know that as a community in general, we'll say thank you for your service, but we don't look deeper. We don't get to know these individuals one-on-one. Rob Jackson, president of Heroes in the Rough. Moments ago, we had talked about suicide rates, and I believe the last numbers that I'd heard, 22 a day. One a day is too much. 
It is. We have to do everything we can to make these individuals who have gone out and laid it all on the line for us and our freedoms to welcome them back the way that we promised we would. I agree with you. Being a combat vet myself, you know, over in 1991, there's a lot of people that don't realize how lucky we do have it over here. Fighting the Middle East and, you know, seeing how they live over there, we are just living in paradise. We really are. And I think people don't realize over here how good they have it. And it bugs a lot of us veterans because of that, because we go over there and fight to keep the freedom here in the United States. It is sad what's going on with things like ISIS and all this other people, but that's just part of life. And we just got to deal with it. But if we come together as a team, as human beings, we can fight against that. We kept this country safe for so many hundreds of years. Why not still keep it the same way? And it's really important for us as citizens to show our appreciation to the people who have made that possible. And we understand as returning veterans that there are issues and we need to, as a community, come together and make sure that these things are solvable, that there is a warm, safe place for our veterans to return to. No, I agree with you 100%. I think one of the other great things that Heroes in the Rough provides is not just the service. I think Rob can probably speak to it a little better about the chair that's the add-on for any of the disabled golfers. They have this special chair that allows them to golf, and it's another thing that you could see if you joined us out on the course for the tournament. That would be pretty exciting. These days, it's just a fact of life. Members of our service, they're dealing with things like IEDs that Mm -hmm. impact their life forever. Oh, I'm looking at this. What I will do also is I'll put some links on our Talking Solutions Facebook page so that people can see some of the things that will be part of the Heroes in the Rough golf tournament that is coming up in October at the Aliante Golf Course. Of course, we will also have a podcast of our discussion today. I always make sure that I ask, what can we do to help? Sponsors, golfers, volunteers. We need all of that. And our sponsorship goes from $100 to golf up to $5,000. There's many different ways they can help. A really good cause. They help them go through all the paperwork at the VA. They help them with emergency funds if something comes up. They help the families. My sons are service, and both of them have come back. And it's hard on the families when they come back. The families need help. They need people to talk to, because until you've been there, you don't understand what they're going through. So that's where Heroes in the Rough come in. You should get involved. It's the Heroes in the Rough Golf Tournament coming up in October at Aliante Golf Course. October 14th. Get on our website, www.snfa.org, or they can call me, 702-350-0025. From what I've been told, our golf events are one of the best in town because it's low-keyed, you get lunch, you get dinner, it's not really expensive, it's a good time. That's what we're there for. We want all of our members and the community to get together and network and have a good time and be able to support a charity at the same time. And what a great charity, Rob Jackson. That would be Heroes in the Rough? Is it heroesintherough.org? That's perfect. Well, it makes sense. <laughs> it just makes That's sense. That's correct. Heroesintherough.org. Yes, and they can get more information. They can donate to the organization if they like. Heroesintherough.org. Also, all the information, links and everything, plus a podcast of today's discussion, will be on our Talking Solutions Facebook page. We are so blessed to have a good number of veterans between Nellis and Creech and all of our retirees. We are so lucky to have them in our midst. We just need to make sure we can do everything we can to take care of them. Exactly. Tracy Brewer, Marie Steele, and Rob Jackson. Thanks so much for joining us today on Talking Solutions. Thanks so much Thank for you very having much. us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Talking Solutions is a production of the Community Relations Department here at Beasley Media Group, Las Vegas. Get more information on today's topic on our Talking Solutions page on Facebook, where you will also find links and a podcast of today's show. Thanks for listening, and have a great week.